Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Van Hook, and I'm Regional Director of the Florida Small Business Development Center at FIU. Welcome to this um, webinar that's focused on cybersecurity basics for small businesses under the Miami-Dade um, Business Navigator Program. Um, I'll just give it like a couple more seconds as everybody streams in, but just wanted to welcome you to the webinar. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, and again, my name is Brian Van Hook. I'm Regional Director of the Florida Small Business Development Center at FIU. Um, if you're here for cybersecurity basics for small businesses, you're in the right place. Um, so let's get into the presentation. Um, I would encourage you guys, we don't want, we want this to be interactive. So please put in the chat um, who you are, who's your business. Um, and also obviously, if you have any questions as we get into the presentation, um, please put in the questions in the chat and we will respond to questions at the end of the webinar. But just thank you for being here and um, please let us know who you are in the chat. Um, real quick, just background on the Miami-Dade Business Navigator Program. Um, the Miami-Dade Business Navigator Program is funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Small Business Administration, the SBA. Um, the Navigator Program was created in 2021. Um, to basically help small businesses with economic recovery. Um, we have a number of great, really great community organizations. Um, SBDC and FIU is kind of like the lead or the hub. And we're working with a number of other organizations that are spokes organizations um, in the community um, and working collaboratively to help local small businesses in Miami-Dade County. Um, as we mentioned, the goal is to help long-term economic recovery and resilience. And we are um, working with a number of businesses, but we're um, particularly focused on um, veteran-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, and socially and economically disadvantaged individuals. Um, I just want to give a shout out to our um, partners in this project. Um, we're working with a number of organizations, in total it's seven organizations. So we have Ascendus, which is a CDFI. Um, we have Branches, the Economic Development Council of South Miami-Dade, the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, Prospera and um, Startup FIU Local, Startup FIU Procurement. And then um, you guys know us at SBDC, we're old friends. Um, so that's seven total organizations. But I would mention that we're also collaborating with a number of other organizations in the community um, on different training events, on referrals, on information sharing. So it's just a really great program um, that's working well. And then uh, we mentioned we're just trying to focus on creating a local navigator network. Um, to work with businesses on consulting, mentoring, and training. So if we can help you in any of those areas, please follow back up with my colleague, Jesus Padilla. And then if you want to connect with us, um, here's all of our information, our website, our phone number, um, you know, the email address, all the social media handles, and everything else. And I'll leave that up for a second, just in case you want to um, take a picture or you want to um, write it down. Okay, now that we got through the uh, basics of the Navigator program, um, who is this guy? Who am I? Why am I? Why do I have some authority to talk to you? Um, well, as I mentioned, I'm the regional director of SBDC at FIU. I'm originally from Louisiana. I've been in Miami since 2014. Um, and I have extensive background with technology and cybersecurity issues. Um, I have an executive certificate in cybersecurity from FIU and I've worked with um, technology and cybersecurity issues for almost 20 years now. Um, in particular, I worked in Washington DC in the United States Senate and also the Department of Commerce. Um, so I'm happy to use that knowledge and experience to help you and get you information on cybersecurity for your small business. Um, I do wanna give you a disclaimer. Um, basically this information is intended to help you how to start preparing your business against a cyber attack and some of the event, the steps you might wanna take um, if you do have a breach, um, I can't cover everything. So I can't cover all scenarios and circumstances. There may be some steps or some considerations that you wanna follow through, which I'm not covering in this review. You know, I don't know everybody's business um, inside and out. Um, so I do wanna stress if you need assistance and better understanding, like what is your obligation based on your industry or um, what are some things you can do in terms of tailoring a reaction plan for your particular company. You know, we always recommend 
that you consult with your technology or your legal um, advice um, so that you can kind of get something more specific for your particular business. Um, so just wanted to throw out that disclaimer before we get into the presentation. Um, so in terms of cybersecurity, let's just start at the basics. Um, cybersecurity is precautionary measures that is, um, in terms of your business, is aimed at safeguarding an internet-connected computer system from unauthorized attacks or access. In terms of like some common questions or common perceptions, uh, most businesses say, why do I need to worry about cybersecurity? I'm a small business. I'm not Sony. You know, I'm not, you know, a big bank or anything like that. You know, only big companies need to worry about that. Um, you know, most businesses think I don't have any valuable information. I don't have anything that people could steal. Um, you know, I'm not worried about cyber um, attacks. It's not going to happen to us. Um, but in reality, um, usually... Um, you know, there's tons of attacks happening all around the uh, world at every uh, moment in the day. You can look at websites like ThreatCloud, um, where you can see like those attacks going on in real time, um, where it's happening all the time. And those are small businesses. Those are universities, local governments, um, you know, big companies. So it's happening. And then who are the folks that are uh, trying to hack your business? Um, we would put them into three different buck or four different buckets. Um, those could be old school criminals, you know, folks that want to get some information from you uh, to sell, or they want to basically blackmail your company to be able to get um, some monetary compensation. Um, obviously, hacktivists who are trying to send like a political message. Um, you could have like uh, espionage, whether that's state sponsored espionage or whether that's espionage like corporate, where somebody wants to get access to your intellectual property, your secrets, industry knowledge. Um, and then obviously, um, you know, you have war where there's been hacking and cyber attacks on el electricity grids, power grids, you know, hospitals, things like that related to um, a war between two com countries um, or escalation between two countries. So you could say that there's four different types of actors um, related to cyber, cyber attacks. And the type of cyber threats um, go everything from denial of service, where you shut down your website or shuts down um, different aspects of your business. Um, you know, phishing, which is basically reaching out to try to get somebody to respond so that you can get access to the system. Spear phishing is more specialized um, attacks where they do get information from you, usually from social media or your website. For example, they can say, you know, they can pose as like a, a supervisor or a boss and say, hey, I just landed in Orlando. Um, can you wire, you know, $50,000 to this account? You know, it's urgent. And then like somebody in the administrative staff in the company would do it and they would basically get the money and then they would run with the money. Um, and we actually, I, I bring up that example because we actually had a cybersecurity training um, a number of years ago. And um, when we brought up spear phishing and some of the different types of attacks, um, somebody raised their hand and said, actually, hey, one of my um, colleagues at another company was supposed to be here, and he actually had that happen to his company. Um, so he's at his company right now dealing with the fallout from that. Um, so it does happen, guys. Um, there's ransomware, spyware, um, you know, computer viruses, and then just old school, like taking the device and running, um, whether that's like a, a cell phone, whether that's a laptop, you know, iPad. Um, you know, desktop, server, and anything like that. Um, as we mentioned, phishing is like an email. It's a text or pop-up message that wants to trick you in terms of giving them information. Um, spear phishing is more um, targeted, where they target particular individuals with like information to make them more likely to respond. As we said, ransomware uh, makes critical information or systems in inaccessible, and you have to pay a ransom. Um, and then when we talk about um, why should small businesses like you worry about cybersecurity? In the media, they always focus about large corporations, government agencies, local government, but small businesses um, are targets and do receive it. Um, in terms of Verizon's report, they talked about 71% of investigated data breaches targeted small businesses with less than 100 employees. And then businesses with 10 or less employees, which is most of those in Miami-Dade County, 
um, are frequently targeted. So the financial consequences for your business is the average cost um, is about $1.2 million due to IT dam uh, damage or theft. Um, the average cost is $1.9 million for disrupted um, operations. Um, in terms of revenue loss, you talk about businesses have to pay for damages, but also have um, you know lost revenue afterwards because maybe people wouldn't want to do business with that company after because they're concerned about the security of their um, information. Um, in terms of different studies, they talked about how 60% of small businesses that were um, subject to a cyber attack have shut down within six months of that attack. Um, the recovery costs can be overwhelming. And um, also, like we mentioned, you can basically have a cyber attack and your customers don't trust um, you know, that particular company. They don't want to do a credit card transaction. You know, they don't want to give you their sensitive information. Um, so that's kind of the concern in that respect. Um, a lot of um, anytime you're talking about cybersecurity, you're going to talk about NIST, which is a government um, center um, under the Department of Commerce. NIST stands for National Institute for Standards and Technology, and they developed a framework to help businesses to think through, assess, evaluate, and develop a plan to reduce the risk of becoming a victim of cyber attack. Um, and the NIST framework you're going to see it in any standard um, cybersecurity presentation um, because that's what a lot of folks are working with um, in terms of like advising businesses and advising other organizations. Um, it first, like anything, you have to identify um, different um, opportunities or different risks. Um, you have to protect your business. You have to detect um, when attacks are coming or when there's um, some type of attack that's already been initiated on your company. You have to respond and then you have to recover. In terms of the NIST framework under identify, they focus on organizational understanding to manage your cybersecurity risk to systems, assets, data, and capabilities. So you got to know what you have. You got to know what you have, who's, who would might want to attack it, um, and how you can protect it. In terms of protect, um, you want to develop and implement appropriate safeguards to um, ensure that you can deliver your critical infrastructure without disruption. In terms of detecting, um, this is most important is you wanna have um, you know, ongoing detection to understand if somebody is trying to hack your company, if there's something going on, if you see any kind of suspicious activity, um, you need to know what's going on because most businesses don't find out about a breach or an attack until months later. And by that time, there's um, you really are like just focusing on what was the scope of the damage in terms of like trying to mitigate it or stop it. And a lot of times with a cyber attack, they can get in your company and they can kind of play around for a number of months. So they can get in and they can have access to your system and you know pull out a lot of files, do a lot of um, you know disruption and things like that, lock up things. So you really want to try to catch it in real time. Um, and in terms of response developing and implementing appropriate activities to take action um, with a detected cybersecurity event. So you basically want to like, you know, like the ambulance says, you want to know that something's going on and you want to be able to respond to it immediately. And then um, in terms of like a breach, a lot of times you're going to hear about this information. It's very theoretical. Um, we'd like to give you practical information. There are local resources you can take advantage of. Um, I would encourage you, you know, obviously the FBI has local field offices here in Miami and South Florida. We do have a Secret Service field office um, that you can contact that does um, pay attention to this, especially if it's related to financial information, um, any type of like cybersecurity stuff they want to know about it. Um, so I did put up there the FBI field office information, the Secret Service field office. Um, and we work with the Secret Service in the past. Um, and also the FBI. So we would encourage you to reach out to both offices if you think um, you do have a breach or you want to um, alert them about something. So we did put up phone numbers and email addresses and websites, and you will get a copy of this presentation after the webinar. So definitely, um, you know, don't feel like you have to write everything down immediately. And then lastly, for recover, you want to uh, develop and implement appropriate activities to maintain some plans for resilience and restoration of any capabilities or services that were impacted during that cybersecurity attack. 
So it's basically those five different steps. Um, in terms of some, so I gave you guys a lot. So let's take a pause for a minute. In terms of some basic cybersecurity tips, some basic things that you can do today. Um, let's get into that. Let's talk about some basic things that you can implement right after you get off this webinar. Um, first, um, protect any information, any systems, any networks from damage by viruses, spyware, and other malicious code. Um, you want to provide security for your internet connection. Um, basic, you want to have uh, software firewalls. Patch any operating systems or applications. Um, that's a lot of the problems is that you'll have like an app on, you know, your uh, laptop, you'll have an app on your um, iPad. And at the end of the day, um, you, um, you're only as good as the latest patch. So if your uh, employees are not patching it, then there could be system uh, vulnerabilities. There could be opportunities for attacks to come in. Um, it's important also to make backup copies of important business data and information. So let's say, for example, somebody does ransomware and they lock up a lot of your files. If you have access to those files separately, then you may not need access to it if you backed it up uh, recently. So those are some things. And also you might want to check because let's say um, there is ransomware. Um, you want to basically check the information if you're able to get access to it again to make sure there wasn't any loss of data, there wasn't any kind of uh, manipulation of the information, like those type of things. Um, and a lot of folks talk about, you know, in terms of uh, firewalls, in terms of security and things like that. One of the basic things is you want to control physical access to bus business computers, your servers, your network components, because that's the easiest way when, like, for example, when people do like a penetration test, when um, cybersecurity experts, they'll go in a lot of times to a, a larger company and just try to get access to some of these things. If they can get physical access to a server, to a computer, things like that, they can do a lot of damage. Um, you want to secure any wireless, wireless networks, any access points, because um, that's opportunities for folks to get into your company and into your uh, network. Um, and then also just training your employees in basic cybersecurity so that they have like that situational awareness where, for example, if, you know, somebody like a supervisor is traveling in Orlando and you get a random email like 430 on a Thursday and you say, you know what, this looks kind of fishy that he's emailing me like a particular account. This isn't out of the, no this is normal for him. Um, you could kind of flag it and circle back and give him a call on the phone instead of you know, trying to like immediately pay something and causing problems for the company. Um, also, it talks about requiring additional individual accounts for each employee and using business computers and business applications. Um, that goes back to the whole security thing. If you're having giving access to personal computers, personal desktops, um, different things like that, you know, you're not in control of like uh, apps, you're not in control of what programs are on there. Um, you know, wireless connections. So that could be giving um, hackers an, act, uh, an opportunity to get into your system. Um, and also having individual accounts, you can basically separate out, really, does it make sense for, you know, the janitor in your company? Should they have access to, you know, all the most sensitive information and includes, you know, account information, you know, social security numbers, things like that. You want to separate the access based on a need to know, like who needs access to that. And then that goes back to number 10 as well, in terms of limiting access to data and information um, by employees and limiting the authority to install additional software. So you want to basically limit that. Okay. Um, so in terms of like the basic checklist for your small businesses, every business can put in security measures. Um, this information is a starting point for basic security practices that every business can adopt. However, it's important to know that some businesses may need more advanced solutions. Um, and that usually depends on how large your business is, how many um, websites you have, how many users you have, things like that. In those cases, that's where you should seek guidance from experts for additional assistance because it is going to be a lot more complicated, a lot more moving pieces. So you would want to, um, you know, factor that in. And also like with the disclaimer I gave at the beginning, um, you want to be aware that this list is not exhaustive and that um, specific security practices may depend 
on whatever industry you're in um, and also what regulations apply to you um, in terms of compliance. So in terms of um, basic your, your company, you want to do a checklist and an inventory of the particular technology you have, what's accessing your system, um, you know, what, what's out there. So basic thing, you know, com desktop computers, laptops, um, email, Wi-Fi, um, Wi-Fi networks, routers, firewalls, um, also any social media accounts that you have, um, who has access to those, who has the passwords, um, websites, um, you know, copiers and printers and fax machines. If you have a fax machine, um, those are connected to your network as well. Um, anything that can be put in via USB, a lot of times you can put in some like a malware on a USB, you can connect to the computer and it'll launch immediately. Um, so you want to be aware of those type of things like who can get in and easily plug in USB. Um, obviously, now you have to worry about things like IoT, Internet of Things, which is other devices that are connected to the Internet and then any mobile applications. And then in terms of passwords, um, passwords are the most common defense against unauthorized access to computers and systems. And you know how can you maximize and make those passwords uh, most effective? Um, a basic thing is you, know, you wanna include upper and lowercase letters. Take advantage of all the tools you have, which is upper and lower, lowercase letters, numbers, special characters. Um, you wanna have like a long phrase like we put up there where that incorporates um you know uppercase lowercase numbers um, i'd also encourage you to put in like those special characters like exclamation marks at signs um you know ha we hashtags things like that um each um, account should have a different password the biggest thing i can tell you is that convenience is the enemy of security so just because it's easy for you to remember five different passwords because it's the same one. That's also easier for somebody to find it and basically get, ac get access to one and get access to the others as well. Um, but there are some programs that you can get that are like particular password managers where you can track multiple um, passwords. And basically you can put them in, you get one password to get into that password manager, and then it has multiple um, passwords that you can track and um, get access to. Um, also uh, nowadays, uh, most computers have it where you can do two-factor authentication. That's where basically when you try to log in, they do ask for like an additional confirmation, whether that's they send an email or a text. Um, a lot of times that it's used through the phone where you might have like a, you know, authentication app or you might call your phone and you have to enter a particular code um, or you can get a code by text on your phone. But two-factor authentication means that somebody would have to access have access to physical access to or remote access to your computer, plus access to one other thing that they might not have access to. Um, so that way, if they just get your password, they'd have to have something else to be able to get access. Um, also, you just wanna change your password on a regular basis um, so that it's like frequently updated and a little bit tougher to get access to. Um, in terms of don'ts for small businesses, um, don't use personal information as part of your password. I know you love your dog. I know you love your kids. Um, I know you love your birthday, um, but that's easily easy information that people can find via social media, um, via like other sources. I um, mean, it's easy for them to work back on the particular password. Um, a lot of times people will have like next to their computer in a drawer, um, all the different passwords. So if somebody gets physical access to your workspace, they can actually get all your passwords. Um, and then we talked about like having the same password for multiple accounts. Um, and then a lot of times you don't want to share your password with anybody. Um, you know, you could think of some nefarious thing for like somebody outside, like a hacker outside. But uh, sometimes you do have where it's um, kind of like corporate, es corporate espionage or even a disgruntled employee Let's say you're, you know, you're working remote one day and you need somebody to go in your office and get in. If you give them a password, you give them a password one day, but who's to say they couldn't write it down and use it down the road if you had sensitive information. So you just wanna be careful about who you share your password with.
Um, in terms of your business, you obviously want to identify what information you have um, available to you. Um, what's the type of information that somebody might want to steal? So, for example, what client information or data do you store electronically? What employee data or information do you store, such as credit card information, um, social security numbers, medical information, um, information on a business that might have like account numbers and things like that? Um, you want to identify any of that valuable information that could get into the wrong hands. Um, you also want to evaluate what type of data you have, um, what, how is it stored, who has access to it, um, those type of things. Um, in terms of information for small businesses, um, like I said, basically, you know, full names that aren't like uh, encoded or encrypted, home addresses, email addresses, um, you know, passport numbers, IP addresses. Um, vehicle registration information, driver's license, social security numbers, um, you know, that type of information. That's information that when it's put together, that could be valuable for somebody and they could use it. Um, same thing, obviously, with, you know, face, um, fingerprints, handwriting, any credit card information. If you're doing business um, over the internet or have um, accept credit cards, um, digital identities, any anybody's where they have a full name, they have a date of birth, maybe they even have a birthplace. Um, those are things that obviously people can use for security purposes. If they have like, where were you born? What's your date of birth? Um, telephone numbers, login credentials to like a particular network um, with some other's maiden name. Those are things that, um, you know, put together or even in different uh, pieces, those could be valuable to somebody that's um, stealing them. So in, in terms of security, um, let's talk about how to keep your business secure. Um, first off, you need to think about where's your data stored? Like I said, is it in a server in the back? Is it in the cloud? Is it on one computer? You know, do you have folks that are in the field that have access to all your servers? You know, those type of things. Um, again, we talked about backup of your information. Um, where's where is your backup information? Where is it stored? Um, do you use cloud storage for your uh, data? What's the security level of your cloud storage? Um, more importantly, how, like going back to it, how often is that cloud storage? How much do you do backups? Um, do you have like an external hard drive? Do you have a separate server? Um, these are all questions you need to ask your business. And these are things that you can even do like a tabletop exercise where you can just get your um, key team members around the table. Just start asking basic questions. You know, think like a hacker. Basically go around and like talk about these type of things, like where's our server, who has access, should, you know, Jesus have access, should Fabricio have access, um, you know, maybe there's stuff that they should be able to access, but maybe there's other stuff they shouldn't. Um, in terms of data backups, you know, you want to have that not just as good business, but you also want to have that if there's failure of a system, if there's theft, if there's loss. Um, so you want to schedule those backups. So you can schedule them, you know, periodic times based on your business operations. Um, you also want to store those in a couple different formats just so you have some backup. Um, and then like we talked about cloud storage, um, it is secure data storage, um, but you could also consider using an external hard drive if you need direct access to that information at some point. Um, in terms of the uh, different technology and different um, computers, um, you got to be careful when you're connecting to public Wi-Fi. Um, they're vulnerable to cyber attacks. Um, you know, hackers can easily interrupt, intercept your uh, transmitted information on a public wire wireless network. A lot of times, too, what they'll do is like, for example, they'll spoof like a wireless network and put like ATT, whatever. A lot of times, People just go, people's um, phones or their desktops or their laptops, they'll um, migrate or their, um, you know, iPad. They'll basically migrate to like one of those networks. So automatically, if it's IT, ATT, Verizon, you know, T-Mobile, those type of things, it'll just basically go to that network or they might think it's a trusted network and they might access it. Um, but once you're on the network, people can see access to what you're doing. And actually when... Um, I was in some cybersecurity sessions. 
and um, we had we were through going through a session, and then we had a break. When we came back, um, the expert that was teaching the session actually um, was mentioning. So I just want to mention to you guys, it's just like a FYI um, for your awareness. You know, a lot of you guys did access um, a public Wi-Fi while we were doing the last the last training, and that public Wi-Fi actually was a local network that we set up, and I was able to see some different people, and I didn't get into your information, but I was able to see some people were accessing Bank of America, some people were accessing the Miami Herald website, some people were accessing here, and you could hear a lot of people like uh, audibly gasp that like, oh man, like this is real, um, and it was basically where, you know, somebody was able to just set up like a spoofed wireless network and have folks accessing it. And then you can get access to their information. So you can even see like when they're putting in passwords and things like that. So um, those are things that you do want to pay attention to. So like we said, um, make sure whatever wireless network you're connecting to that is trusted. Um, a lot of times it's just very basic where you go into the settings and just make sure that you are not accessing public Wi-Fi or wireless networks without asking. So that way you can basically like approve if you want to go to that wireless network or not. It's just not like automatically routing to that wireless network. Um, and then also you want to ensure that your wireless, um, when like your internet traffic, that it's encrypted um, by checking security certificates um, of different websites. And those are things that you can easily check. Um, and then in regards to your own wireless network that you have for your company, um, you can change the network name and you can enable wireless encryption. Um, as we talked about passwords, use a strong and complex password for the network, um, regularly change that password. Um, also regularly change the administrator password. And as soon as somebody leaves your company, um, you wanna revoke access for those former employees. That should be part of your standard um, exit form or your exit process um, to, to revoke that access so that somebody doesn't have access after they leave your company. Um, stay up to date on any device updates from your manufacturer and then ensure that if you do have any public wireless networks that they have encryption for added security. Um, in terms of training, so I'd always say that you can spend a lot of money on um, you know, different security, different firewalls, different programs and things like that. But the best investment you can make is training your employees because your employees are your front line. You know, they help your bottom line. So at the end of the day, they're here um, and they're the ones that are interacting with customers, with stakeholders, with different partners. And if you train your uh, employees on cybersecurity, even if they just have a basic uh, cyber awareness, um, those are things that you can, um, you know, they can help you be like the front line of protection. So um, things that you can train your employees on is what is your overall security policy of the business? Um, what is proper use of computers, networks, and their internet connections? Um, are there any limitations on the personal use of phones, computers, printers, or any other business resource? For example, if you have a company issued laptops, um, or like an iPad, you can limit what they can put on those. You can basically put it in where your IT folks or you are the ones that can like install things, that they can't install just random programs on there. Um, at the end of the day, any type of thing, if they put on, you know, any type of social media, if they put on TikTok or anything like that, you know, then they would, they would only be as good as the recent um, patch or the recent update for that particular program. So you, you can limit the use of apps on your uh, company issued equipment. You can also basically lick, uh, dictate um, any limitations for um, what's going on to that. And I would also say um, any personal phones, personal computers, um, personal printers, those type of things, those are things you really need to look at depending on the security posture of your company. Because um, I know a lot now uh, working remote is pretty standard for a lot of companies. Um, but that is something you need to factor in. As again, I said, convenience is the enemy of security. Um, you do also want to evaluate any restrictions on working from home 
or processing any business data offsite. So if somebody is printing out, you know, information and spreadsheets and things like that that have security related information, you know, medical information, um, so security numbers, those type of things. Um, if you work in anything related to medical information, um, there are a lot of like huge fines like related to HIPAA. Um, so those are things that you would want to pay attention to. But even if you're not working with medical information, there's still information that you could have trouble with here in Florida or another state um, if you're just being very loose with that information. I and mean, then we talked about um, phishing. Um, one of the best ways to train your company it, or your employees is you can actually do phishing yourself or phishing tests. So there are a lot of like free resources available um, out there that can basically give you information. You can print out like little flyers that you can put in your office. Um, and there are some, some services that are paid, but there also are some, some, some services that are no cost um, where they can do like a free phishing test on your employees. And you can just kind of see some potential vulnerabilities on it. I think um, actually if you pay for some of them, they can send out like a free Domino's pizza coupon. And then you can kind of see who's on your work computer like it's like yeah i love a domino's uh, pizza coupon and then if they click on it and put in information um and i know for a lot of companies that have done that um if you do a phishing test yourself a lot of um, your employees would be more hesitant the next time they see like a, a potential phishing email come up they be, might be less likely to click on um, the link in terms of being uh, watchful for your business and playing defense um, you want to, as we said, you want to know what data you need to protect, where it is. Um, some it, data is critical to your business. Some data is needs to be super secure. Um, you want to know what employees have access to which applications. Um, like I said, not everybody needs access to every particular server, every particular file, um, those type of things. Some like might need to be restricted. Um, you want to understand what are the reporting requirements of a data breach based on where you're located, um, based on your industry? Um, there are particular report, reporting requirements for cyber um, breaches, um, depending on particular industry. You said I mentioned medical information is one. Um, also, the state of Florida does have um, particular breach requirements and reporting. Um, so those are things that you want to review with your technology partners and with your um, legal advisors because they can advise you um, particular of your business. Like I said, you want to do tabletop exercises, you know, do a trial run, do it where it's not urgent, you know, not an emergency, get in and have something happen, but it can help with the situational awareness of your employees and your team. Um, so that's a, a way you can do it is do a tabletop exercise. There's a lot of um, available resources and information um, that you can access via the federal government. Um, also, SBDC and FIU, we have access to a lot of those too, if you're interested. Um, and like I said, you want to set up a training program for your employees to help prevent phishing attacks. One thing you can do is take advantage of some of those free phishing um, you know, services where they'll do a phishing test on your business. There are some that are more advanced, they're more complicated, um, where you can actually pay for it. Um, but, you know, even if you want to just, if you do regular trainings, trainings or meetings with your employees, um, just doing a basic, um, you know, presentation on the type of information that your business works with that hackers might want to get access to, they would have more situational awareness when they get an email or a phone call or see something on their social media accounts. Um, that's a way that you can basically, um, you know, have them be more aware. And then we talked about backing up your data to make sure it's as close as you could to what's running on the current system. Um, backup data also helps if you do have ransomware, because let's say somebody locks up your system and doesn't give you access to files, you might be less likely to pay um, that if you have access to that information separately. So that is, does give you an, um, an advantage in that respect. Because um, most of the businesses that are hit with ransomware, whether it's like a system or data, um, they don't have a way to get around the encryption or they don't have access to that data otherwise. Um, and then, like we said, there are, is ways to do real-time monitoring of threats, um, touch points to your system, access, um, so that you can discover that you know, on a daily basis. 
um, or a regular basis versus you finding out like a couple of months later after people have had time to go in your business and play around. Um, you also want to check um, on your encryption methods um, if they're secure, because um, as the slide notes that most computers become more efficient, this can lead to less secure data and information. So you just want to basically follow up um, on that and um, kind of make sure you're on top of it. And like I said, we're not just going to throw a lot of information at you. We're going to give you some really good resources. So um, we mentioned this. Um, NIST has like a wealth of information on their website um, that you can get access and they do have a particular focus on businesses and small businesses so you can get on their website. Um, the Federal D uh, Trade Commission does have a data security site that has good resources and tips. Um, you have the FBI. Um, I would also, also encourage you to check into the um, FBI and Instagar Instagram. Um, InfraGuard, you can basically get into InfraGuard as a local business, you can have access to um, a lot of resources. They have meetups, they have information they share. Um, it is a really good resource. Um, and they do have local chapters that you can get into for InfraGuard. Um, that will be up there on the FBI website. Um, Homeland Security has a great website. Also the Small Business Administration does have information as well. And then before we get to questions, um, if you do want to meet with one of our business consultants on cybersecurity or on something else, um, you can scan this QR code and we can um, follow up with you to get you registered. Um, this should take you to a link to register your business for consulting. As I mentioned, it's no cost to you. Um, you have access to a lot of information and um, you know expertise and resources. So we can definitely help you. So like whether that's cybersecurity, whether that's access to capital, starting a business, um, you know, we're here to help you out. And with that, I'm gonna um, stop sharing and then just go in to um, check. So Jesus, we have any questions in the chat? Not at this moment. Okay. Um, so um, I think we have a couple more minutes. So I was gonna actually throw out a couple of uh, extra tips. Um, first, I wanna thank you guys for attending this webinar. Um, just really great interaction, really great information. Um, and, um, then I was going to mention to you that, um, you know, as Jesus mentioned, the webinar is going to be recorded and will be uploaded on our, uh, Navigator web, uh, YouTube channel. But in terms of, um, cybersecurity information, we mentioned if you're in South Florida, if you're in Miami-Dade, um, we do have a local FBI office. We also have a local, um, secret service office. Um, Jesus and I and the team have worked with them pretty regularly. Um, really great resource, great information. Um, so you de should definitely check out both of their websites. But also, if you do have a data breach, if you do have concerns about a particular threat, you can reach out to those offices. They're very accessible. Um, and so those could be a local resource to you. Um, we did mention um, you should talk to your technology partners. You should talk to your legal um, advisors. They can give you like very more tailored information for your particular business because every industry is different. I talked a little bit about medical industry. Um, there's a lot of other uh, industries as well that there is industry specific information. Um, data security, cybersecurity is also very important. If you are part of a particular industry that has a national association, the national associations now do post a lot of information on cybersecurity. They do have regular trainings and offerings on that. So you should definitely check into that because um, it'd be more tailored for your particular industry. And like I said, you guys know your business a lot better than I do. Um, so there's particular things that you would be able to catch that maybe like an outside expert wouldn't know. They would know industry practices, but you really work in your business day to day. So you do know, you know, different aspects. Um, so a lot of times it is very, very helpful to a business. If you don't have thousands of dollars to spend on a cybersecurity expert, you can go to a lot of these websites and get a lot of this information, and you can basically come up with an internal cybersecurity plan. Um, one of the things we didn't include in this pr presentation, but that Jesus can get to you, is um, there is like a pretty cool website where you can get, um, you can basically get um, like a basic cybersecurity plan and you can customize it for your business. So if you guys are interested in that, please email Jesus. 
um, because we can get you that information. It's included in another presentation that we give on the same topic. Um, and then um, I did see there was a question in the chat, Jesus, where somebody asked, is it safe to use a business laptop at home? Um, your home network is the possibility that the network could have been hacked. Um, for that, that is a concern, like we said. Um, for your, the question for that would be on your home network. Um, is it encrypted? What's the um, security situation? Is it accessible to outside folks? How tough is it? Um, so those are type of things that you should, um, you know, check into. But for that, um, you want to basically first know what's on your business laptop. Is there anything super secure? Second, um, have you looked into the security of your home network? Um, is there any potential vul vulnerabilities? Is, is it up to date? Um, you know, do you have encryption? Um, that type of thing. And then I see folks were looking at the, I see Yasnason, hey Yasnason, um, was talking about LastPass for password management. Um, all right, so anybody else have any tough questions before we wrap up? Anything else? Definitely take advantage of all the really great resources in the community. SBDC and FIU is one of them. Um, there is a lot of really great um, resources. There also are a lot of resources from the state of Florida. Um, they do have um, a couple of different websites that has a lot of information that's Florida specific. Um, also information on Florida's laws because there is particular legislation in Florida kind of mandating if there's a, um, a breach on um, a particular amount of uh, users that there is uh, mandated requirements in Florida. Um, so if you do need access to any of that information, please feel free to follow up with Jesus um, and we can definitely help you out. We just appreciate your time. We appreciate your interest in this particular topic. And um, please don't hesitate to reach out because we're gonna be having a lot more webinars coming up. Take care. Thanks for your time.